The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. One of the great records in Scripture is the record in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. You know, that commanding voice, Lazarus, come forth. And then Lazarus comes out of the grave, the tomb, all wrapped in grave clothes. What a fabulous record. And when we read the records about Jesus Christ in the four Gospels, what do we see? Jesus has such love such passion, such compassion, such kindness. And then we read the Lazarus record, and it's such a powerful record, but, <laughs> but there's, frankly, there's some sticky verses. Like, why does Jesus say, this sickness is not unto death, and then Lazarus dies? Why does he hear, your friend Lazarus is sick, and then say, well, I, I'm gonna hang around here. It says he stayed where he was for two more days. You know, these things are very un-Jesus-like, and they, they kind of stick in my mind. I know for years and years they stuck in my mind, and maybe as you've been reading the record, they've stuck in yours too. And what we find out is that Jesus knew there were things in the culture that he had to overcome, beliefs and customs that he had to overcome, which is why he stayed where he was for two more days. And also, we know that, for example, when Jesus said that the sickness is not unto death, he was speaking, and the Greek is very clear on this, that it was ultimately not unto death. So if we unpack the Lazarus record properly, then we'll see that it just fits right in to the character of Jesus Christ, the man that we know and love. Now let's go and get some context to the Lazarus story. Where was Jesus anyway? Where was Lazarus? What's going on? Well, Jesus had been in Jerusalem ministering and he was talking in John chapter 10 about him and his father and the intimate relationship between them. And this finally got under the, uh, under the skin of the Jews so badly that John chapter 10 verse 31 says, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And so what did Jesus do? Well, he got out of Jerusalem, he, he left. So John chapter 10, verse 40 says, And he, Jesus, went away again beyond the Jordan, that's the Jordan River, to the place where John had been baptizing earlier, and he stayed there. Now you can read John chapter 10, John chapter 11, and it doesn't tell you where Jesus was. It doesn't tell you where John had been baptizing. This, I think, shows us something about the scripture. God expects us to know his book. He expects us to read his book, remember what he wrote, and understand it. Because as the Gospel of John opened up in John chapter 1, verse 28, it says John was baptizing in Bethany beyond Jordan. Now, if we're going to understand the Lazarus record, we have got to understand the geography of Israel. You know, when I run tours to Israel, when I studied archaeology in Israel, I was taught that the geography, the land of Israel, is called the fifth gospel. Because if we understand the geography and the land, so many things open up in the gospel record. And that's certainly the case with Lazarus. So we need to know where Jerusalem is, where Bethany is, where Bethany beyond Jordan is. Let's go to the map and take a look. Now, to get us oriented, first of all, here's the Dead Sea. And then the Jordan River, going to run north all the way up to the Sea of Galilee, to the, to the far north. And here west of the Dead Sea is Jerusalem. And then just slightly southeast of that is Bethany. And this, of course, is where Lazarus was buried, died and was buried, where Martha and Mary were. And you go down the Jericho Road to Jericho. By the way, it's about 15 miles from Jerusalem to Jericho. And you should know that there are three Jerichos. Historically, there are three Jerichos. This is New Testament Jericho because this is a map of New Testament Israel. So this is New Testament Jericho. Old Testament Jericho is about where my pen tip is, a few miles to the further uh, east. And then, of course, there's modern-day Jericho, which is in the general vicinity. So 
Uh, if you go across the Jordan River another five miles or so, then Bethany beyond Jordan is somewhere in here. We don't exactly know where. The town has been lost, um, but towns are being found all the time. Just a couple months ago from when I'm making this teaching, the town of Dalmanutha in the Galilee was discovered. So from, uh, from Jerusalem, or from Bethany rather, where Mary and Martha were after Lazarus died, to the area where Jesus was is probably 20 to 30 miles. In other words, it's a good day's walk. And we're going to need to know that for the record. So let's go back to the record. So here we are in John chapter 11. And it says, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany. And we saw where Bethany was, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And then the text fills us in a little bit about Mary and says, And it was this Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now, this event of Mary anointing Jesus was still future. But when John was writing, all the events were past. Verse 3 says, Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, look, he who is your friend is sick. Now, I know that most of the versions say uh, the one you love is, is sick or he who you love is sick. But there's two different words for love in the New Testament. One is agape and one is phileo. Agape is a targeted love. It's, it's a love that you can direct. It's a love that you can command by your will. It's why Jesus Christ could say, love your enemies. See, you may not be able to feel good about your enemies. In fact, I, I would venture to say probably you cannot feel good about your enemies. But you can love your enemies with the love of God by doing good to them. But this is not the word agape. This is the word phileo, and it represents friendship. It's that tremendous, <laughs> it's that tremendous bond between friends. And in, it's stronger, in a sense, than agape because... It, it, comes out the, it comes out of the relationship that you have with the person. It's not something you can just command and direct. And so Mary and Martha sent to Jesus Christ. Now what, what's the scenario? What's the likely scenario? The likely scenario is that Lazarus had gotten sick and was getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you get up the next morning and Mary and Martha are looking at Lazarus and they're like, Wow, this, this is no longer just a sickness. We're talking about real trouble here. They were really worried for their brother and whether he would live or not. And so they rounded up some friends and they sent messengers to Jesus Christ. And they sent those messengers and they said, Lord, look, the, the one who's your friend is sick. And so now what happens in verse 4, Jesus says, well, when Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness is not ending in death, but is to the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now, these are some, are some great keys, some wonderful keys. First of all, he says, this sickness is not unto death. It's important that we understand the translation there, because Jesus was not saying and did not say that Lazarus wouldn't die. The way the Greek is worded, what he's saying is the final result will not be death. In fact, here's the Good News Bible. I think the Good News Bible did an excellent job with this translation. Again, it's a free translation, but it brings out the meaning of the Greek text. So the Good News Bible says the final result of this sickness will not be death. And that's precisely what Christ was saying. You know, if you check the commentators, like one of the commentators that I use a lot, R.C.H. Linsky, here's what he says about this. He says, it must be noted that Jesus does not say that Lazarus will not die, but only, not, only that this sickness is not, and then he uses the Greek, prosthanaton. Its final result and outcome is not death. And that's what Jesus was saying. He never said, never intended to say that Lazarus wouldn't die. <laughs> what he's saying is, I'm going to tell you, okay, Lazarus is sick. I just got the message. But the final result of this will not be death. And now we, we can see how Jesus is going to move forward to deal with this Lazarus situation. <laughs>